Hey everybody, Christine here to make a video on how to do BJD face-ups. Now throughout this tutorial, I would like to give a disclaimer that I am in no way a professional face-up artist. So the things that I do may be a lot different than other BJD face-up videos that you have seen. I do have to use MSC and I use all of the things that other professional face-up artists use. However, my style is very different from them. So I'm not telling you that my way is the best way or anything like that, but I did get some, you know, requests from people on Instagram and in my comment section in, on YouTube to make a video on face-ups. So, or face-ups tutorial, I guess. So I decided that it's time. It is time to do that. My friend uh, on Facebook, who is also a BJD collector, a long time ago had asked me to do a face-up and commissioned me to do a face-up. It ended up chipping and she asked me to do the same face up again so she sent me the head a couple days ago and I've been working on making clips of the video of this face up so that you guys could see kind of how I work so this is what the face up looked like before and I'll show you guys a picture in a moment but um, I'm, I was looking at it throughout the video so if you see the iPad in the corner, that's what I was looking at. <laughs> I try to make it as close to the original picture as possible since I did that face up. It's not really copying because I mean I originally did it. So anyway, um, just, you know, work with me because this is my first time doing this. So hopefully you guys uh, appreciate the hard work that I've put in to make this video. It was kind of hard. <laughs> anyway. Stay tuned. So here's my work table. I have all the supplies that I normally use for a face-up, and I'm going to talk to you guys about the things that I use most in my face-ups. Now, most importantly, I 100% need to use watercolor pencils. The brand that I use the most is called Faber-Castell, and this one is Albrecht Durer. I have a bunch of different colors here. You can probably see this over here full of all these colors I've got. But mostly the colors that I use are shades of tan and brown, and then black and white. Sometimes I use different pinks to put lines on the lips, but I haven't been doing that lately, so... They're here somewhere. Here's a pink, here's a pink, and so on. Uh, the next thing that is really important for a face-up is having brushes. So these are the brushes that I use most often. Most of them are makeup brushes, and then I have this one really thin paint brush that's by Tamiya Modeling. So here, let me see if it's getting on the camera. It is. Yay! And then the rest of them are just like little... Uh, elf tool brushes so nothing too fancy they only cost like a dollar or something like that this one was like seven dollars on Amazon the last tool that I have here is a little pointy thing and I use this to add Mod Podge on the tip and that's how I get my um, eyelashes on so yeah <laughs> All right, uh, moving on over here, one of the other really, really important things I use in a face-up is soft pastels. So the ones that I use the most are a brand called Pan Pastel. Hopefully this is coming out. And they stack on top of each other, which is super nice. <laughs> but this is what they look like. And I have... <sighs> man like at least half of the ones that they sell <laughs> but the problem with these is that they don't have every single color that you would want for a face up <clears throat> so I end up having to supplement by buying these which are also by Faber-Castell these are the colors that it comes with and you can get this at Michaels so these pastels you can get at Michaels but the pan pastels don't they're not sold at Michaels you have to get them at um, an art store like, what is that one called? Um, Blick Art Studios, for example, sells these. And then here are my last soft pastels. 
hopefully these are coming out. So these are just a few from when I started the hobby. They're by Blick. And this color in particular is really, really good for uh, making kind of like a pinkish tone for the cheeks. It's very nice. Good for blushing. Another thing you're going to need for face-ups are paint. Now, some people use acrylic. Ooh, my fingers are all dirty now. Ugh. Anyway, some people use acrylic, but I found that I mess up too much to use acrylic and you can't take it off once it's dry. So I use gouache paint. Now, this gouache paint comes off with water, as all gouache paint does. And I don't remember what brand this is. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say, but whatever. I got these at Michael's also, and they're pretty good. So it says My Artscape, but that's not the brand. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, um, gouache paint is really good if you mess up a lot because once you put it on, it can dry, and all you have to use is a Q-tip with water to get it off. So that's another thing that I usually have by my table are these Q-tips that have one rounded side and then a pointy side. And it really helps me um, clean up any mistakes that I make. Sorry, back. Anyway, I use these to smudge. So if you have um, something on the face, for example, the cheeks or something, blush, and it's too dark, you can use one of these to smudge it and it makes it lighter. If you mess up and you want to take off whatever you messed up with, usually I use one of these kneaded erasers. They kind of look strange when you open them up but when you buy them they look like this hopefully this is coming out and they last i don't know a couple weeks if you use them a lot but once they start getting really dark and they're not easy to mold like this um then you gotta throw them away if i can't take it off with one of those erasers then i usually use one of these i got this at michael's also And if that doesn't take it off, then I have one of these. But as you see, it gets dirty really quickly, and ugh, it's it's a mess, so I don't use it very often. <laughs> uh, anything else? Okay, so you need a sharpener. Um, your pencil should be incredibly sharp at all times. Let me show you the difference between a not sharpened pencil and a sharpened one. So this one over here, this one's pretty sharp. But the one over here is not that sharp. <laughs> It makes a huge difference if you're trying to draw a line on a face up. And I also use these for smudging if I need to smudge. I don't use them that often because this pretty much does the job, but it's there just in case. And finally, all the way in the back over here, actually there's two things. I have my two types of um, coat. So I have, um, this is called ZM. And this one is Mr. Super Clear, the ones that everybody knows about. And I use those for the coats of uh, sealants. And then I have a lot of Perlex glitter. Whoops. Depending on what I'm doing on the face up, I have different ones of these. And you can buy these on Amazon. And you can also buy them at like Blick Art Supply. So those are the things that I use for my face ups and now I will begin my face up. Here's the head I'm gonna be using for today's face up. This is a mini fee Rhea and it does not belong to me. I am doing this face up for a friend. So the first thing I'm gonna start with, some people start with blushing, but the first thing that I do is I draw inside the eye ducts. So I start with black and this is going to be the eyeliner. The way that I do this is just drawing with a pencil, a watercolor pencil in black. Now, if you watch the videos online, they usually start with acrylic paint and they line the eyes like that, but I found that using acrylic paint will sometimes crack later on because of how thick it is. So even with gouache, sometimes that happens. So I don't use that. I just draw inside like this. Now I'm doing this with the side of the pencil as you can see so it doesn't have to be sharp for this. 
In case you're wondering why this is one of the first things I do, it's because if I mess up, I have to erase. And if I have blushing on there and I haven't coated it with MSC, then it's kind of annoying and I have to start over. So. Now I'm going to be putting the eye line. So this is basically some makeup now. All right, now we're moving on to the next thing that I like to get out of the way. So I will start with making the shape of the eye brow. Normally I start with straight up black, but the smarter thing to do would be to start off with a lighter color so that when you put the line, um, it's kind of subtle and you can build up on top of that. So. I'm going to try that way because that's the way that you should do it. <laughs> so here's a nice subtle color. Bloop. Now I use one of these small brushes. This is the one I normally use for black. But that'll be okay. And let me check the picture of what they want. All right, so they want brows that are straight and then they go down on the end, straight and then down. Now this is when I use my kneaded eraser to erase any of the parts that I messed up on, which is a lot. So I go in and I just make a point with my finger and I erase until I get the shape that I want. And you keep switching the point.
And you see the more you erase around it, the better the shape is. And if you mess up, you can always erase the entire shape and start that one over. Nothing is final until you seal it. Sometimes some of the powder from the pastels falls down on the cheeks and you gotta take it off because if not, you're gonna have a bunch of little sealed in flakes Alright, next step. I have not sealed anything yet, as you see. I'm going to be using um, pink for the inside of the lower duct. Now I erase away anything that fell out. Now I'll be adding some pink to the lips. And I take away anything that is out of the lip line. All right, this is going, going to be the first coat that I do. Actually, let me blush just a little. I'm only gonna blush a very little bit. I'm going to spray down the first coat. All 
All right, it's been a couple of hours since I put a layer of Mr. Super Clear over this part of the face up and I'm gonna be working on the next coat. I'm gonna start with making lines or creases over the eyes and I'm gonna be starting with brown. Now the, the final result is gonna be black but I wanna start with something that's easy to remove. Now here's the reason that I start with not black. If I mess up, I can easily remove whatever area I messed up on by just using a Q-tip that's a little bit moist.
All right, moving on to the next step, I'm gonna be blushing around the eyes. Next step, I'm going to need a little bit of gray. The lighting was getting pretty bad, so I had to stop the video.
this is the face up that I'm going for. Now you're probably wondering why I'm copying a face up. It's because this face up here was one that I've already done for this customer before and they asked me to redo it because it chipped. So I'm redoing the same exact face up that I had already done for this customer except that this was like almost a year ago and hopefully I've gotten better. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna seal this down. It's been a day since I put down the next coat of Mr. Super Clear, and now I'm gonna be working on the eyelashes. Now some people do this with a paintbrush, and I have tried it before with a paintbrush, but I find that it's much easier to just draw it on.
I just finished putting another coat of Mr. Super Clear over this and I just wanted to point something out. Whenever you're using Pearl X or any kind of glitter and you put Mr. Super Clear over it, most of the shininess goes away. So the previous layer, I was just kind of putting down some color to see how much of the shine would stay. I normally only put it in the final coat, but I wanted to show you guys just so you can see the Mr. Super Clear kind of made it dull and it's no longer very shiny. I'm still gonna do it again because when you build it up, it will show the shine. But the best way to put any shimmer on a doll, this is gonna sound super weird, is to put it on after you have put on Mr. Super Clear and you're waiting for it to dry. All right, time to spray it down. We're now on the final step of the face up. I finished glossing, I finished coating, I did everything necessary except put on the eyelashes. So the eyelashes that I use I get from AliExpress. Um, some of them come in a little case that looks like this. These in particular um, came loose. So all I do is fold them in half, I cut the tips off, they're usually too long.
and then I cut right in the middle right here. Hopefully this is coming up. Now they're not going to be perfect, so I have to cut them down to size. The way that I do that is I curve the lash so I can see how much I need to cut off. So I need to cut off a little bit. Now you can decide, do you want to cut off the end that's long or the end that's short? Since this is an MSD doll, I'm going to cut starting from the end. All right, now this is where the tool that I was telling you guys about comes in handy. Now we wait a couple of minutes while it dries off. It's been about three minutes and although you can still see that the Mod Podge that I use is still white, it is starting to get clear on the lashes. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting them in. The way that I do that is I bend them in my hand so I don't wear a glove for this because it's just too difficult to do this with gloves on. And it helps me mold them into the shape that I need. You can see I do things a lot differently than all of the BJD tutorials online. Oh. Now this might be hard because I'm on camera here so I can't really use the above angle. <laughs> Now I make sure it's in, and I let it dry, and that's it. Looks like it needs to be cut a little. Ta-da! And we're done. Now we just let them dry for probably about a day. Thank you so much to everybody who's watching this video all the way until the end. This is my first BJD face-up tutorial video, and although I know it wasn't perfect, I tried my very best. So I'm going to put in a couple of eyes. She's not completely dried, but just to give you an idea of what she will look like once she has eyes. This is a mini Firia. Hopefully this is coming out. <laughs>